Today, I am finally combining the Novation Circuit tracks and Circuit Rhythm. And you know what? I thought this was going to be easy. After all, the Circuit Rhythm and Circuit tracks were seemingly made for each other, made to complement each other, and part of what I love about them is their elegant simplicity, so this was supposed to be a slam dunk. But as I dug deeper into this setup, I was partially delighted by the ingeniousness of the interconnectivity and then partially really frustrated by its quirks. But you know what else is an ingenious piece of design? This shirt, available at the link in the description. Designed by my very good friend Gwen from Coastline Creative, part of the Gabe Miller Music Collection because we're trying to do this whole merch thing now, helps keep the channel going. But self ads aside, let's actually get into this setup. <laughs> To start, here's how everything is connected for this particular setup. I'm using the rhythm here as the primary device for reasons I'll get into in a bit. So I have a MIDI cable running from the rhythm's MIDI out into the track's MIDI in. And I have two audio cables running from the track's left and right audio outputs into the rhythm's left and right audio inputs. The net result is that you can hear anything on the tracks through the rhythm and you can affect it with the master filter or grid effects. And when I hit play, both devices are synced up. And if I go to my tempo, you can see this is synced, meaning I can do fun stuff like this. Do tempo transitions in order to bridge between different genres in a live set scenario, which is pretty cool. Piping the audio of the tracks and of any device for that matter into the rhythm has a couple of quirks, one of which I'll get into now and one of which I'll get into later. The one that I quickly want to mention to now is if I unplug this cable, so I only have one cable of the tracks running into the rhythm, so it's running in in mono, you hear everything right up the center. But then, if I plug in the right cable, it just knows and switches to stereo. For a setup like this, that's super nice. For a case where you want to pipe two devices into the rhythm, well, they're going to be panned hard left and right, and I reached out to Novation Support and they said that currently there's no way to change that. The other part of the routing is the MIDI setup. I don't want the notes that the rhythm is playing to trigger any notes on the circuit tracks, because I want the circuit tracks to be able to have its own completely independent patterns. So I've got both of these turned off. This also brings me to the thing that made me want to try this setup in the first place, and the reason this setup can be so powerful with a big giant important asterisk that I'll get to in a second. When I took a look at the manual, I noticed that this pad here is marked project. And sure enough, this is lit up red differently from the others and is unable to be changed. So if I go to my projects, watch this. Switching to a new project on one device switches to a new project on the other device that is being controlled. When I saw this and then tested it, the possibilities felt infinite. Suddenly, I could have completely independent patterns on both devices and just build up an entire set through project switching. And yes, in its most basic form, that works. And then I can just keep both my mixer windows active so I can mute and unmute tracks as I go. And these will basically act as one unified device. In theory, I could do a live set without really having to think too much. I could just mute and unmute tracks as I desire and then switch between projects and just remember Remember that that has to happen on the rhythm rather than on the tracks and that I have to use the master filter on the rhythm rather than the tracks. So for a quick demonstration, I can do stuff like this.
So in isolation, this worked great seamlessly even. But once I started stringing songs together in order to build up a full continuous live set, things started unraveling. Chord progressions, when I would switch from project to project, would come in in the middle of chord progressions, but only on the tracks and not all the time, only some of the time. And it got so bad that I nearly considered killing this entire project until I figured out why and some slightly janky ways of getting around it. So first of all, let me demonstrate to you what was happening. And to do that, I've prepared this little example. So let me show you in isolation what these projects sound like. So just a little intro sequence and then this. We introduce our main melody. Watch what happens when I switch projects too early. Everything has kicked in at the wrong time. Or here's another example. Here's what this little breakdown is supposed to sound like when it comes in. And here's what happens when I switch from this intro project to this breakdown project. It dropped me in in the middle of these chained patterns. And just sounds like a mess. And this kept happening. Anytime I had a musical passage longer than a bar on the tracks that I wanted to switch to, this would happen. And I couldn't figure out a rhyme or reason for it until I noticed something. This is Gabe from the future. The thing I noticed is probably one of the culprits, but it might not be the whole story. I've been in contact with Novation Support, and they've been lovely, and we've been trying to pinpoint the source of the issues that I just showed you. At this point, I think we've narrowed the problem down to two potential causes, one being an unexplained bug that might just be causing stuff to kick in at the wrong time, and the other one being something that I discovered that I'm going to show you right now. So, quick bit of background to make this make sense. On both devices, there are two ways to switch between projects. There's the queued up way and the instantaneous way. So the queued up way, and I'm going to just make it so we can't hear the circuit tracks. The queued up way works like patterns. Where it flashes to indicate that that project is queued up and then switches to it and starts from the beginning. There's also the instantaneous way that involves holding down shift. And this is nice for moments where you realize, oh, I need to switch right now. It just picks up wherever you left off and just keeps on trucking. Instantaneous switching. So you will notice when I queue up the next project on the rhythm, notice what happens on the rhythm and what doesn't happen on the tracks. You will notice this one flashed, indicating the project was queued up. This one didn't, it just instantaneously switched. And so hopefully you can see why I'm getting dropped in right in the middle of musical passages, it's because the tracks isn't queuing up its projects, it's just switching to them instantaneously, dropping me into whatever it thinks is the middle of the project based on how many bars of music have preceded it. That gets incredibly limiting because let's say you have a cool little fill like this. We've heard this before earlier in the video. <laughs> That little two bar fill is off the table if I don't want it to screw me over three songs in when I try to introduce a four eight bar melody or chord progression. Or let's say that the audience is really into a song section, so I loop it. Well, I will get punished for that down the road, and I have to really be counting to make sure that any longer than one bar sections on the tracks will kick in at the right point. That seemingly eliminates a lot of the flexibility and spontaneity that I thought that the setup was going to give me, and it was at this point that I considered giving up on the setup entirely. 
But given the fact that this video and the video of the full set exist, you can probably guess that uh, I found a workaround. But I do want to mention these issues are possibly addressable via firmware update, but I don't know if that's ever going to be a thing that happens. So where does that leave us? Well, that brings us right into the arms of the thing I was trying to avoid using this entire time, which is scenes. Now, on a single device setup or a setup where the Trex is using MIDI 1 and 2 to control a device, scenes super useful for getting you through song sections. When I did a Circuit Trax and Roland MC101 combination setup, scenes were my best friend. In this case, however, though, the controlling device can't trigger scenes on the connected device. It can trigger project switches, as we've seen, but it can't trigger scene switches. So that means I have to do the very silly thing that I've been trying to avoid and just switch between scenes on both devices at the same time, which feels unnecessary and feels like there's margin for error. But you know what? It does work. So I just have to set up my scenes carefully in order to always start a project on a one bar looping piece of music, like some sort of intro, and then I can introduce a chord progression. So for demonstration purposes, let's look at this. This could just loop infinitely. Then, because this forces your patterns to start over. Hopefully you see where I'm going with that. So anytime I have some sort of breakdown, I have to do that. For another example, let me quickly So there are multiple ways you can tackle this bit of problem solving, but it's a kind of silly bit of problem solving to solve a really annoying issue. Now, as I alluded to earlier, let's finally talk about why I'm using the circuit rhythm as the primary device in this setup rather than the circuit tracks, which is what I would normally use. Partially, it's because I'm going for this kind of tech house-ish sound, and that's going to place a heavy emphasis on stuff like drums, bass one-shots, percussion, all stuff that's very rhythmic. So the circuit rhythm seemed natural for that. But the other bigger picture reason for that is latency. Listen to this. I'm going to mute everything on here except for the ride cymbal on the circuit tracks and the kick drum on the circuit rhythm. Now, the sharp-eared among you may already have noticed this, and maybe even in this case, it's not super noticeable, but to my ears, that ride cymbal is hitting noticeably late. Piping the audio of an external device into one of the circuits introduces latency, so anything percussive on the circuit tracks is going to be just a little bit delayed. Not enough to kill the entire idea, but enough to make me always find it annoying. To make it even clear, let me demonstrate with kick drums. So this kick on the rhythm, this kick on the tracks, there's that rub there. They're not quite hitting together. I find this really annoying and I can kind of live with it if I say, push my ride cymbal way into the background and give it some extra reverb. Maybe that's somewhat tolerable. Or these little percussion parts. That's fine. Long drawn out synth parts are absolutely no problem because that latency is unnoticeable. But that's why I went with the rhythm is because can you imagine having eight tracks of rhythmic elements all playing at once, all playing a little bit late? 
that would be, in my opinion, unlistenable. It's already pushing it with the percussive elements on the tracks, meaning that these four tracks are not wasted, but they're definitely nerfed. The other way you can get around it is with micro steps. <laughs> So I have this hitting quite a bit early, not a whole step early, but just a couple of micro steps early. And that actually sounds perfectly listenable. It also helps that that's a pre-shifted clap. And so it's meant to hit a little bit early. So here's what it sounds like if it hits on time. Like I said, there's some lead up in this sample, but you can hopefully hear that Having it hit a little early is really doing a lot of good here. I could also get around this by just having the devices be connected via MIDI and piping both of their audios into something else. But first of all, I own too much gear, yet I do not own a mixer. And also, I wanted to try to get this setup to be as simple and self-contained as possible because it seemed like it would work. It seemed like these were set up for that. And it's just not quite there. <laughs> it's fine. That's fine. Um, the other thing that you will maybe notice is the fact that uh, there's no way to sidechain something from the rhythm in the tracks. So I needed to get a bit creative with that as well. So let me once again go to this initial project. So the side chaining on the tracks is happening independently. I have this kick track, which is active. So if I mute it, when it's muted, there's no side chain. But if I have it going unmuted, but then turn it all the way down, it will still trigger the side chain. So for any time that I want to have uh, synth one and synth two side chained or pumping, I just have to make sure that I have this kick active and triggering the side chain. Bit of a workaround, but honestly, that's kind of the least of the workarounds. That's relatively seamless. Although I do need to make sure that any circuit tracks project I switch to has the kick turned all the way down because Let's say that that isn't the case. So for this circuit tracks project, the kick is not active, but it's allowed to be at full volume. And then for the project I'm about to switch to, the kick is turned all the way down. Listen to what happens. Did you hear that ghost 80s kick? That's basically the tracks realizing, oh, I need to turn this down and doing it really quickly, but not instantaneously. So any circuit tracks project I have on here has the kick turned all the way down, whether or not it's ever heard, especially if I don't want a kick to be heard when I switch to that project, that kick is turned all the way down. So with all of that, do I recommend this setup? Maybe if what you love about the circuits is their elegant simplicity, then no, this is was very frustrating to work with, and I nearly had several brain aneurysms trying to figure it out. On the other hand, I do like the results that I've gotten. I think they sound pretty cool. I think the set that I've been able to work out is pretty neat. So if you're willing to go in knowing about the limitations and you're willing to work within them and just accept that it's going to be far jankier than I think it should be, then maybe. If you'd like to hear those cool results, though, you can check out the full set that I did, and I'll do a video walking through that eventually. And also, if you like cool merch designs like this, you can check out the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.